Hi there everyone, happy holidays and Merry Christmas to those who are celebrating Christmas. I am here in my greenhouse and it's such a beautiful day, especially for a day in December, but I'm really enjoying the sun that's coming out today. Yesterday was very dreary and um, I actually have some time to do a video on my greenhouse. So it'll be a greenhouse update. I think it'll be long because I haven't done anything long in a while and I thought that I would just go over in more detail some of my orchids that are worth mentioning. So first of all, I wanted to just show you guys the entire greenhouse, of course, if I can put it all, have it all shown here. So this, I'm standing in front of the door. When I walk in, these guys, um, my dad recently put them up, the shelves up, and these are my bigger orchids or my bushier orchids. So most of them will be Oncidium, Miltoniopsis, and so forth. And they are just quite large. So um, they have more room in terms of space, in terms of all the space right here between all the shelves. And um, this shelf is about, I believe, about four, no, six feet. So six feet long here. And this shelf down here is um, 16 inches wide, the very bottom shelf. And then these are just 12 inches. I would prefer it to be 16 inches so I could fit two orchids side by side, however, my dad just wanted the 12 inch and um, I think he'll be okay for now. I don't have any issues with it. Um, and I have this guy that has been in bloom ever since I purchased it, probably for a year now. This is one of my Miltoniopsis and she keeps on blooming no matter what. So oh, there is a bud hidden back here that's almost opening. She smells incredible. She smells like roses or some sort of lemon verbena and it's just very very intense but also nice and classy at the same time and she also has some buds in the back as well but she is getting just so bushy and that is uh, what I notice about my Miltoniopsis is they grow very fast and they get quite bushy. So I have some of my um, my tenifolia, my maxillaria tenifolias here. I saw a bunch of them and I just, they were very cheap so I purchased them. And they, this one is actually one that Pam from Mouse Lily Channel sent to me. I won that and these are my other ones I purchased. They are doing really well. I have some, I have a, um, zygo back here that these are from the old leaves so i'm not or from the old bulbs so these are really old i'm not too worried about the yellow leaves here um i've learned to not freak out about things like that because they're old leaves and this one is just growing out of its pot it's got some really good roots here so the bulbs are climbing up rather than outwards and I'm not particularly fond of that but that is how they grow in nature. They do grow up the trees so it's okay for now. It's just that it's harder for them to stay moist because their roots are just hanging out. I have my warm compost here. Um, if you guys want me to do a video on warm composting, just let me know. I'm, I've had them for about a year now, and I've actually collected some compost here. Um, and the great thing about the, this is they're so moist and soft. And this one, usually soil dries out pretty quickly, but this one has been sitting here for about two weeks and it has stayed this moist. Like, it hasn't dried out, It ha um, I don't water it, I don't do anything. It, two weeks ago, it was like this, and two weeks later, it's still like this. So, it's really good for organic, um, organic gardening, and I just feed my worms. Um, I actually make smoothies for them <laughs> from old uh, vegetables and fruits, and they love it. And um, 
they have like little tiny babies, which is pretty awesome. <laughs> Uh, I think I people get really freaked out about them, but they are really wonderful. So I have, um, you can see I have my Oncidium Alliance orchids here because they get really bushy. And this one is, um, I just re recently repotted and of course this is a new bulb and it's just growing out like crazy here. Um, oh, and my, let's see, my Comanera Maasai White. So this one I actually purchased from T Trader Joe's, my mass-produced orchid, and you can see that it is in spike. And I posted this on one of the groups that I am that I belong to on on um, Facebook, and it has this is one bulb and it has three flower spikes. So I was a little curious about that. Hopefully it's not dying, um, but we will see. So this one already has buds here and here. I'm super duper excited about it because this one is going to be red with a white spotted lip and it's gonna be pretty awesome. So there's not a lot going on over here. Um, I got, I purchased these trays that fits the about 6.5 inch pot. So they are kind of big, but it also leaves room for my bushy orchids to sit in because they're not like completely touching each other. Um, there's not a lot going on here either. These are some of my zygos and they're just, some, some of my zygos are doing really well. They keep on blooming and some of them aren't doing much. So I have some of my mom's herbs down here that um, she moved in or actually my dad moved in and this is probably one of my problem orchids, which is why I moved it down here. Um, only because I need to get it tested. I'm not sure what that exactly is. I think it's really just like water getting stuck on it. And I have had orchids in the past that have this, these um, patterns on them. And I've gotten those tested and they came out as negative as well. But because I wanted to be sure, I just kind of hung them down here um, where they're kind of away from the other orchids and they're, they're in my sort of quarantine area. I've gone over these already. These are the newly purchased ones as well. So they can't like sit with the other guys. And I have my heater right here. This is my second heater. And um, my some of my mom's herbs, which I'm not particularly fond of, just because this one has caterpillars in it, and she, my dad moved it in, and I'm um, there's definitely evidence of caterpillars, which I have not been able to see at night, so I'm a little concerned about that, and not exactly too happy, but it's there. Um, kind of separated, but I don't think that would really help anyway. So over here, I have my Cymbidiums. They are huge and I need to do a Cymbidium video for my um, for one of my viewers because it was suggested and I have not had the time to do it. But my Cymbidiums are in spike. So these are all rescue Cymbidiums here. Um, they were given to me either because um, the owner didn't want them anymore or couldn't take care of them anymore and they were just kind of left sitting outside, not doing much, um, and not taken care of. So this one is another flower spike. The buds haven't come out yet, but you can see that the, this one, the buds have come out. I'm excited. I'm hoping the colors will be pretty rather than maybe like a brown. But um, we will see what happens. And this Cymbidium is actually a rescue from my mom. She actually does not like orchids, so she has been neglecting this for about 10 years now. And it has been sitting outside in the freezing, like below uh, freezing degrees. So it's been really sad. And finally, it has recovered. So there's a new um, growth right there. If you look at that one but I will go over that in more detail later on I have my zygo that I purchased from the San Francisco orchid show and it is in spike again so that's twice in 
a year. So there's actually two flower spikes. One here and I believe one up here. There it is. Oh, that one has grown quite a bit. So there's that one and that there's two so far. I don't I don't see anything else, but I, I really have not checked. Um, and some of my other orchids here, my Platilla striata, it like completely died off. The older uh, leaves completely died off. And this is my first year um, going through the winter with it. So I think they die off and they're putting out new shoots. So they're not, the plant hasn't completely died off. It's just the old ones, the old growths have completely died off and is giving um, life to new growth. So I think that in the spring, they will completely grow back. This is my frag. I purchased a while back and it was on sale. It's doing well. Um, it hasn't died yet. So I assume that that's a really good thing. Um, let's see up here. I have some of my random plants here. Um, my string of pearls here and um, what is this one called? A uh, peperonia that I believe has caterpillars. So I had to use some insecticide in it, which I'm not very happy about. Um, but I didn't want it to spread to my other orchids and my other plants. So this one, I believe this is just an ivy. And there's, let's see, some of my fern here that weren't doing that well because I ne started neglecting it. But this one is doing absolutely wonderful. And I have some of my Tillandsia here that are doing well as well. Well as well. So this one has finished blooming, but um, I have high hopes for it. And this one has also finished blooming before this one, but it's still hanging on. So it's really great. Let's see. I have here, up here, my bromeliads. So I don't have that many, but this one is a pup that I got from my coworker. And um, the ones in the back are what I got for myself. I'm sorry if the lighting is really bad. The sun is actually coming from over here now. And there's a frog, a really big frog living in that plant right there. So that is why I do not like to use insecticides in my greenhouse. Um, the frog, I believe, is happy. And I was thinking about taking him outside, but I think that it might be better for him to be in here because he is used to the warmth in here and outside it gets really cold so I don't want to shock him but I I just worry about him that's all and here is my epi <laughs> so I showed you guys this epi I purchased in October and it was blooming and it's still blooming and it was putting out more bloom spikes so I was not able to repot it and I'm not even sure how I can repot it I mean look at this so um, I'll, I'll just leave it and we'll see what happens. But here is my, oh gosh, plumeria. Ha! My plumeria, I got two of them. I gave my mom two cuttings. I kept two cuttings for myself. And of course hers is growing, you know, really wonderfully. And mine is just kind of skinny, but hanging in there, of course. And um they were kind of suffering for a little bit from the cold, but they are hanging on. I have my grandma tophylum down here, not doing much. Hmm. I have, oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, I just found this flower spike right here. That's awesome. So this is from my Cymbidium. That's awesome. See, this is corner is kind of hard getting into, so obviously I never look at it until now, but there's a new growth right there, and um, I water this probably like every other day, just misting it on top, um, just so that they could be moist. And these two cymbidiums are actually from my coworker's mom. So this one will be a green one, and this is gonna be a pink one. And I got it when the spike was like probably that, tall and now they've gotten really big so 
This was supposed to be a division, but you can see that this is, I don't know, to me, this is not a division, it's a bush. Um, it's like a whole plant. So these buds here have matured quite a bit and I'm super excited to see it because it's gonna be pink. And I'm, I've always wanted a pink cymbidium. And this one will, um, her mom said it's gonna be another year and it's already putting out a new growth right here. And this one is a more mature baby growth. So, um, and she also put, she potted it in the um, mixture that I really like, which is the bark. And then she even put crushed shells in there, uh, eggshells in there. So that's pretty awesome. Okay, okay so I'm going to stop here um, to end the first part of the video because I don't want it to be too long and I'll move on to the next video with the other side of the greenhouse.